Hey guys, what's going on? Trey Markle here with Century Software. We're here with Chris Garvagna, the CEO and founder of In Advance Capital, longtime funder in the industry, longtime customer of Century Software. And Chris, pleasure to have you here as always. Um, it's uh, New York, West Coast, <laughs> Southern California. I know it's a, a jog, so thank you for doing that. Um, Look, you've been in the industry a long time. You're a funder. I would imagine some of the deals that you don't want to fund, you also broker and you've got relationships with different types of funders out there. We're coming out of a very interesting time, even the times that we were in. Um, could you talk a little bit about what you're kind of seeing in the industry? I mean, from yeah. default rates to underwriting guidelines, what's the appetite of some of the merchants out there in borrowing? What's, yeah. what's, what's going on here? Yeah, so I think when we first started coming out of COVID, we seen a high, when we first started, when we were in COVID, we seen a high level of default rates, right? And working with our merchants, working with the business owners was really key, right? right. Having more of a consultative approach than, hey, where's our money? We're gonna send you to legal. That wasn't working, right? right. Not, not right. that I was worried. This wasn't part of who we are in integrity, right? right? So we really went with the human element and that was important. Um, so that's really what really helped us be successful. Uh, the one thing that we seen as we were coming out of COVID and looking at the industry, there was a lot of funders doing a lot of interesting things, right? Right, uh, th right? There was a lot of money flowing around. People weren't able, you know, some of these lenders weren't putting that money and they're holding this money on their balance sheet. So we've seen a lot of money going out in very weird ways. So interesting. that's starting to change now. Um, but from a merchant perspective, you know, for the last year, year and a half with the PPP and the EIDL, you've seen actually a depletion in the in how many you know how much lending is going on right, right? so right. we've been really smarter about how are we underwriting our default rates have actually gone down since the pandemic right because yeah. we're being smarter with the businesses that we're lending money to right uh, and then you know you have a lot of a lot of savvy business owners that have been smart with taking this capital that is relatively cost effective right right so getting three percent capital 30-year capital is yes. something that you know is, is a definitely a competition in our business, right? So government money. So what we've been seeing is that a lot of our business is either coming from relationships that we've been able to work with and help through the pandemic, right. but also a lot of new businesses, right? So if you've been in business for a year, two, three years, you're not getting these PPPs. You're not getting these EIDLs, right? right? So a lot of the businesses that have spurred out of the pandemic, the people that are starting business in the last year to three years, that's where we're seeing a lot of our growth. Um, or the relationships where we really stepped in and really supported our merchants. Right. Now with the PPP loans and the IDA loans coming to a quick end here, right? We've got, I know the IDA loans have been adjusted now a few times yep. for more money. You can go in for a modification and get those dollars. PPP loan, I, I, I'm not actually sure if they're still being offered or not. But as those things dry up a little more, as those things come to an end, are you guys seeing things pick up a little yes. bit? Are we not there yet? So, what, what you so seeing? we're seeing them pick up a little bit. Okay. I think that, you know, that money needs time to trickle out, right? right, right, so, right. so businesses are still spending that money. They're still holding on to those costs of capital. Uh, so I think as we go into Q1 of 2022, mm -hmm. we'll continue to see a spike. We right. have seen a spike, right? Right, But because not everyone got approved for the second EIDL, right. right? Or even the second PPP that was in place. Right. So you know we are definitely starting to see a what I'll call a level up. Mm -hmm. I think that we'll see a spike as we go into Q1 of 2022 mm -hmm. because when it's non-existent, you know, people have used that money to really support their business, right? right? Or they spent it, you know, you've seen the stock market, people have taken this money and put it into different places, right. not always their business, right? right so right. as you see this money come out of equities, as you see money, you know, that has been depleted on the business, we'll continue to see growth in our sector, in our industry. So I'm excited about that right. and building programs with your with companies like yourself yeah. to be able to build automation, how we really being able to serve that, you know, that business owner. Right. Now, with with some of these business owners that have taken an idle or a PPP loan, are you seeing in your underwriting where you guys are approving businesses that have taken that money and are looking for more money? Or that they didn't get enough for some of the government programs and you're seeing in their underwriting, okay, yeah, you look like a good borrower, we're gonna give you even more money? Or is that not kind of really happening a lot? No, we're looking at it, right? right. Especially for the ones that took the second EIDL. Right, right. It's, it's use of capital. If they've really used that capital, right? And this is where good underwriting comes in. Right. right? If, if a business owner has used that capital responsibly, then that's something that we're looking to deploy capital to and, and, and advance yeah. against, right? So if they've used that for inventory, if they've used that for growth, even if they use that for stabilization, 
right? right? Companies need to stabilize. So if they used it for the proper purposes and didn't go to Vegas and put it on black, <laughs> then we're absolutely going to look at that business to provide more capital. So a lot of the responsibility of the business owner is what we're looking at and making sure the use of proceeds were handled appropriately. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now back to the middle of COVID, the beginning of COVID, you said a really great point about, look, it's not in our nature to go you know, chase the dollars. They're struggling, like everyone's struggling, right? Did you find that strategy of pulling back and really being proactive with the borrower? Was there a big ROI on that? I mean, yeah, did you really see a huge difference? Huge ROI. Right. Um, both from what you feel as a human being and how you're actually able to help businesses and individuals, because we're all here together, right, working right, together, right, exactly. going through what was a traumatic experience. I know myself sitting on my couch, seeing my business come to a halt. Right. Seeing my stock market portfolio go like this, I was like, oh man, what am I going to do? Right. 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 So being able to serve the business owners, being able to really serve my fellow New Yorkers and people that, you know, that really just my fellow human beings and my brothers and sisters, that was so important to me. And yes, it has paid off in ROI, right? It's right. paid off in referrals. It's paid off in just having... Absolutely. Right. I've become one of the businesses. Okay, I'm going to pay Chris back, right? Not right. just in advance cap, right? I'm going to pay back Chris. I'm going to make sure Emily, the people within our organizations that they were talking to, we're going to prioritize them because they prioritize us when we were going through our worst times. It makes perfect sense. And good on you guys for doing that. That makes perfect sense. Now, we've got some change coming in the industry, yep. particularly right now in New York. Yep. And I know this is a tricky question. I know. Good question. I've got, Bring it on. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of questions on this, and I'm not even sure I have an answer just yet, but I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are. We've got this disclosure law yep. coming coming soon, right? In in especially in New York, and I think other states will follow suit, right? Yep. Probably over the years. So, how do you calculate? How do you disclose to a merchant or a borrower true cost of capital when these programs, especially what in advance offers? I know you guys do a bunch of things, but for for traditional advance, where you're purchasing future receivables, right? How do you back into an APR? How do you how do you do that? So. One through technology, right? Yeah, right, <laughs> right? right. So right, absolutely. working with Centrix is absolutely going to be helpful in that. But I welcome the transparency, right? Where a lot of companies are like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to figure it out. You know, I've talked to my legal team. I want to, and I've talked to even our sales support. And it was okay. Let's be transparent. Right. Why wouldn't we want to be transparent? Right. Right. So as long as the borrower, I don't want. You know, it's important to us. We make money by getting paid back. Right, right. When right. we're advancing a business money, the way that we drive our revenue is by getting that capital back. So if we're going and putting someone into an advance, right, that is outside their means and doesn't serve them, well, then it's not serving us to put it out. Well, right. So I'd rather yeah. have a higher level of transparency, allow our business owner to know in full transparency what they're actually receiving at what cost so that they can make a educated business decision. Right. Not trying to hide. Right. right? We put a lot of our own family capital. We're not a fee shop, right? right, right. <laughs> and I'm yeah, gonna use right. that word, but you know, my own money, my families, my parents, my kids, right? I believe in this business and that we're really serving businesses. So for us, I want to be as transparent as possible because then there's never a reason, oh, you didn't tell me this. Right. Right? It's like a relationship with my wife or, you know, it's like, you didn't tell me. No, I told you. Right, right, right. right? So, yeah. so telling and being transparent, I actually welcome it. So, um, I love that answer. That's great. And I mean, people are either going to be forced to do it or they're going to be like credit card companies. They're going to try to bury it. But I think, I think you're right. I think being transparent is only ever good for both sides of the bus, right? Agreed. Okay. So last question for you. Yeah, of course. Um, like I said, we're coming out of this pandemic or arguably we're still in it, but I think it's starting to slow down. Hopefully. Um, what do you kind of see for the future here? Right? We've got this, hopefully this big wave of growth and borrowing and business and getting supply chains back in order. Yep. Do you think we're going to see rapid growth over the next five years? Do you think it's going to be kind of a crawl, walk, run back to where we were pre pre pandemic? What are you kind of seeing for the next five years? I think we're going to see rapid growth as we go into the second quarter. I think you're going to see growth Q1, but I think you're going to see rapid growth. So as true capital starts to run out, as our government stops giving away what I'll call free capital, right? <laughs> right? That's what or it is, right? irresponsible capital, we got to be very careful about that. Right. Um, but I think we're going to see rapid growth as we go into Q2, and I think what's going to be important for us as advances and lenders in the space is making sure that we're building proper automation, making sure that our underwriting guidelines are in play, utilizing AI and proper algorithms to really be able to learn our business owners, being able to learn 
how you know we're making decisions on putting out capital. So I think automation is going to be key. AI is going to be key, and I think that you know as we continue to see go into the second quarter, I think we're going to see rapid growth. Right. right. And again, I think going through with the consultancy um, methodology is going to be you know for us as a company is going to way we're going to really see growth. We're having good communication. Right. I love that, man. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being on the West Coast. Thank You've you. Been great. Appreciate it. Yes, man. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Centrix.